How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this looping animation in Geometry Nodes. Now, a lot of you might recognize this animation. This is a remake of a tutorial I did a long time ago. It is probably one of my most popular tutorials I've ever made, and every few years I try to update it with new techniques, new things, because I really want this design to keep living on. So this is a remake of that original tutorial. The project file is currently available on Patreon. If you don't know about the Patreon, I just posted a huge collection of tutorials. There's the Concert Visuals Collection, which will teach you tons of tricks and techniques to make better motion graphics. It's eight tutorials and two and a half hours. And also the most recent collection of tutorials will take you through five different style frames, how I made them, and it will show you how to make really cool looking natural and organic looking renders and designs. So if you want to check out my Patreon, that is linked in the description and you get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, let's go ahead and make this tutorial. All right, we are going to go ahead and start out with just any piece of geometry in your scene. I'm just going to use a plane and I'm going to head straight into geometry nodes and start the geometry nodes tree by clicking new. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and we're going to delete sort of your traditional grid and we're going to get a brand new geometry nodes grid because you get full editability at all times. We're gonna stretch this one to a size of 20. We're gonna stretch this one to a size of 40. And then we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go subdivide it by 30 by 60. So we can get some nice square faces on this whole thing. First thing I wanna do is add a instance on points node right here. And normally we'll just get a regular geometry nodes cube, but I want to bevel these and beveling doesn't work in geometry nodes. So we have to make the model externally. So right up in here, we're just gonna go ahead and get a cube. In the modifiers, we're gonna add in our bevel modifier and then just bevel them, you know, give them a pretty decent bevel and subdivide it. Uh, keep in mind, the more subdivision you segments you give here, if you do a lot of instances, it can get really heavy. So just be kind of mindful of that, but, be, but make sure this looks perfectly smooth because we will get our camera really close to these squares and low poly will be noticeable. So try to, I don't know, keep it at four maybe. We can always come back and fix it. I'm just gonna hit G and move it out of the way. Back on the plane, and then what we can do is see this cube in the outliner? We'll just drag it right into here and plug it right into the instance socket. Now what you can do is click and drag on here and scale them down till they're no longer touching. Something like that. We do want them to be pretty close. Looks like these are still touching. So what, 0.33? Uh, let's do 0.32. Cool, all right, so that's probably perfect. Now what I wanna do is get these to be displacing up and down so we can actually animate that. So that is gonna be, we're not gonna actually move the instances technically, we're actually gonna move the original grid geometry with a set position node. So we'll get that set position node and we're gonna go ahead and get a vector math node and that is just gonna be so that we can adjust the strength of the displacement and we're gonna get in a noise texture. So. We'll go ahead, click on normalize, factor into vector, and then plug vector into offset. And you'll notice that. Let's go ahead and switch this over here to multiply. And the multiply function, it just helps you strengthen the effect. Now notice the effect is kind of happen, happening diagonally. That means it's sort of displacing on all axes. So what we want to get is to get a combined X, Y, Z node and say only displace on the Z. So now when we play with this strength slider, which is the multiply, we can actually only see it on the Z. So I'm gonna do my strength at 1.9, right here on the settings, bring the detail to zero, and put the scale at 0.2, and that will get us a really, really nice looking wave that if we switch this over to 4D, we can now go ahead and look at how that animation looks. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. What I wanna do now is add some character to the design by actually deleting in random places some of these cubes. So just like we went ahead and displaced the original grid geometry, we're also gonna delete some of the original grid geometry. So what we're gonna do is to get a, we're gonna get a delete geometry node, and then we're gonna go ahead we're gonna get a noise texture and a color ramp. So let's go ahead, get both of those nodes, plug them into each other and plug that into the selection. I'll bring my detail to zero and my scale at 1.7. And then if we just bring in the black node here on the color ramp, you can go ahead and see that random deletion happening. And so once we fly through, we'll see some of these deleting and it'll add just a bit of character and interesting design to this whole thing. 
So now we're at a place where we pretty much have this all noted out. These are most of the nodes that we're going to need for the rest of this animation. So let's go ahead and set up. Let's go ahead and set up this to actually be a loop. So we'll just go back to layout so we can see it much bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my camera up. So I'll hit the tilde key. We'll click front. I'm going to hit shift A and get my camera. And then I'll take him and we'll just move it up a little bit. And I know because of the way that I scaled this, we'll go back to geometry nodes and explain it. See how this is a size of 40? In real space, it's a size of 20. So you kind of double it here in uh, geometry nodes. So because of that, I know we're exactly where my camera needs to be, which is going to be the positive 20 value. So if we go here to the transform settings, and right here on the Y, if you type in 20, if you type in actually negative 20, you will be at the exact point you need to be for this to this camera to loop whenever we start instancing things out. So what I can do here on my camera now, just click on it and then click on the camera settings. We're going to give it a focal length of 10. And then I think I'm just going to bring my camera down a little bit. We will be able to edit this further later. Let's take this guy. I'm going to hit Alt D. We're going to bring it up. We're going to on the Z, we're going to rotate it by 180 degrees. And then on the Y, we're also going to rotate it on 180 degrees. And so now we'll have a little bit of uh, difference, won't look super duplicated, and we can make it easy on ourselves. So now what I want to do is set this thing up to loop. So what we can do is highlight this here. I'm going to hit M, new collection, and we're going to call it loop so that now we can instance this thing down the line. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Collection Instance, Loop. And then let me show you the trick to make sure that this will loop exactly. Hold down Control and bring it over. And then right here. So see where it kind of stops? See that gap? That means you went one little thing too far, one grid too far. Holding down Control, snap it to right there. And you now have a perfect loop. We'll do that right here. And then let's go ahead and also do a precautionary instance. So we'll hit collection instance loop and then bring one behind the camera. The reason why is because there are some reflections once the camera gets to the end of the grid. And so we need to make sure that those are established at the very beginning as well, making sure that the beginning and the end of the animation do look exactly the same. I'm gonna go ahead and create one more duplication so that hopefully it's far enough away from the camera. And let's set up our loop. So I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames, bring your, bring your cursor back to frame zero, and then in your preferences, be sure that in the animation tab, your default interpolation is linear. So go ahead and click back on the camera, go to the transform settings, see where it says negative 20. We'll go here, go to the very end, and just type in positive 20. And you'll notice nothing changes, that means you have a perfect loop. So if I were to press play, and I'll just bring my cursor all the way to the end, reset, we have a perfect loop. So that is how you uh, make these perfect corridor loops. But now we need to go ahead and loop the, the noise texture that creates the, uh, the displacement of the grid. So we can go ahead and go back to geometry nodes. And then this noise texture right here, the one that's the W that's controlling that, we're gonna go ahead and loop the W movement. So make sure your W is set to zero. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to hit a mix color node and then plug factor into here. Be sure both of these noise textures are exactly the same. We're going to go back to frame zero and then right here, bring this factor over. I'm going to hit I on the W, hit I on the factor. We'll go to the very end and I'm going to type in on the W a value of 19 and then we'll bring this factor over. Hit I. Now that we're at the very end right here, hit I there, and then because we did positive 19 on this top one, we're going to do negative 19 on this bottom one, and we now have something perfect. So I want to go ahead, I want to bring my camera down just a little bit, and then this top guy, see if we go here to the beginning, I'm going to clip on, click on this top one, and I want to also bring him down, so we're just going to go ahead, bring that down like that, hopefully it changed on all of them, it did, okay. 
I want them to be as close to the camera as possible to really create that really cool look. I don't want the camera to run into the cubes. I want it to get really close to them though because I love um, that effect. I love the way that looks and we want to uh, we want to do that. So we now have this going for us. It looks awesome. And now we can go ahead and start adding materials, adding some lighting. So let's go over here and get a set material node right over here to the right. We're going to go ahead and create a metallic material with sort of a slight gray and then go ahead and grab that. So if we look that here in cycles, we now have some uh, metallic materials going and we can go and start a little bit of lighting. So we're going to go here to the cycles preview. I'm going to hit, I'm going to make sure I'm at frame one. We're going to go ahead and just get a area light. We'll bring it up. And then let's see, we'll bring them a little bit closer to my camera here on the, uh, the Y axis. And then we're just going to rotate it by 90 degrees. We're going to scale it up and then bring it to the edge of this scene. So right over here, just bring it to the edge. Let's go ahead and make it a nice teal blue and a power of 1200. So now we have that. And then what I want to do is hit Alt D on the red little arrow, just bring it over to the other side. And then here in the rotation, just give it a negative 90. We now have our lighting ready to go for us. And then here in the world settings, we can just bring that down to black. Okay, so we now have this. We could be finished. We do need to go ahead, hold down, click on these two areas. So we're gonna click on this area, hold down control, and then click on the camera, hit control P, object. And then those are gonna be parented to the camera as this animates through. But if you remember the original um, version of this animation, random cubes had some glowing parts. So we need to be able to randomly assign some emission to random cubes here. And also, this is the first version of this tutorial where we can actually add roughness, add texture roughness to each cube, because originally that would break the loop, but I figured out how to fix that so we can now add that to this animation to, in my opinion, finally make it perfect. Um, so we're gonna go here back to geometry nodes. What we're gonna do is get an attribute so that we can randomize emission here and still keep the animating uh, the animation looping. So we're going to get a store named attribute node. We want it to recognize instances and we just want to be able to generate random values. And I'm just going to use the letter R for the name of it. So now if we go, so now if we just switch this over to a shader window here in the emission, we can give it a strength of like five. We can get that attribute node, tell it, the instancer, because we're recognizing instances, a name of R, and we can plug that into color, and we'll start to see a little bit of a change. We can go ahead and get a color ramp to further edit that. So if we switch this over to constant, we now have random cubes lighting up. So let's get two colors going. We're gonna get that teal blue, and just get a few of them, and if we get a new color, make it a nice light, very, very light pink, and then just do a couple of those. We just want to sort of trickle in these. We don't want them to be too bright. Now let's go ahead and add in a noise texture on the roughness, because originally I was not able to do that because you would apply the roughness across every instance rather than keeping the roughness pattern within the instance, or it'll do this thing that I'm about to show you. So what we can do is let's just go ahead and get a color ramp, plug it into the roughness, and we'll get a noise texture and we'll plug it here. So if we just go ahead and edit this really quick, you'll notice, notice how this pattern is repeating on every single one. This is a repeating pattern on all of them. Now we can bring up the roughness and try to hide the fact that it's doing that. I, I don't prefer that. So I'm gonna go here to the material preview window. Again, you can see it's repeating on every single cube. And so what we can do is actually use this random value and plug it into the 4D. So right now, the 4D is acting the same on every single one of these. But if we plug this random value, it will now do a random W value on every single cube. Now it will be very, very slight. So what you can do is get a math node, switch it to multiply add, 
so that you can strengthen that change and then you can essentially the addend is your W value again. And now we have a unique roughness pattern on every single one of these cubes. So now we can just bring that detail to 12. We can bring that roughness really high up, something like this here on the color ramp, the black portion, bring it up to something like this. Now let's go back to the original view so that we can actually make this look really, really nice. So I'm gonna bring this white down to just a little bit down. We don't want it to be perfectly super rough because that's kind of aggressive. I'm gonna bring my scale to like uh, 1.5 and then I'm gonna bring this gray just a little bit darker. We do want it to be pretty cool looking. And let's just do a quick render just to see how this roughness is looking in the render. Here we go. It's, uh, it's pretty loud. I'm just gonna go ahead and go ahead and massage this a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this one down some and then this one up some. And then let's just do one more render to see how that looks. All right, so this is how it's looking. All I wanna do now is just bring down uh, the color of the metal a little bit so that we can have a little bit more uh, definition and interest here. All right, so now that we have this, last thing I wanna do is go ahead in the world settings and get myself a little bit of volume to really just tie it all together and make it look nice and hazy. So we'll go ahead and get a principled volume node and then just get the amount of haze that you want. And then let's see how that looks in a final render. There we go. This is the final look. This is the final animation. We can go ahead and just preview it in the material preview to see, okay, how's it looking? Let's go ahead and get this right here. Make sure everything is a perfect loop, the noise, the emission. Yes, we are done. We're completely done and ready to go. You can rotate the camera if you want. That's why I did my final. Uh, let's go ahead and let me show you how to set up your final settings for denoising and for set uh, for your samples. So in the render, this is gonna be a pretty noisy render. Unless you're using Eevee to render this, I would give your max samples at like 600 and then make sure you're denoising it um, in the final render. And then I highly recommend just do kind of an overnight render just to make sure this is perfect and you can give it some time to actually make it noiseless and denoise and beautiful. And then I highly recommend doing a PNG sequence and then you can just sequence it through. You would just hit render, render animation. If you don't want to do that and you just want Blender to give you a MP4 just completely finished, you'll go here from PNG to FFmpeg video, color management, encoding to MP4, also QuickTime, if you like QuickTime, and then go here to perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and when you're done, you'll have something really cool like mine. So there you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed this sort of remastered, updated version of probably my most popular tutorial. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned some stuff. Again, if you want to check out all that stuff on my Patreon that I mentioned that is that is available right now in the description and you get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.